Hi, thank you everyone for uh, taking your time now, especially during this time, to join us today at our Asian Heritage Month concert. And I'm sure we all have been through so much this past month, right? With the pandemic and the politics that surround us and impact us greatly. It's one of those times that makes us realize how fragile many of the things we took for granted are. And many have experienced loss of jobs, hopes, lives, and we've all witnessed also the uptick in violence and hate crimes in many public parks and transportation systems, which certainly provoked a lot of fears and worries to immigration communities, especially among our senior residents. So as a millennial Asian American citizen and artist, I often wonder what could have caused this sudden surge of hatred and division, and what is the least we could do to help combat the crisis? Indeed, it's a very complex social problem that cannot be isolated to a single cause or motive. Some say it's just bad people trying to take advantage of easy targets. You know, some might think it's because people are envious of the fact that we are perceived as the more successful, more minority. Or some might speculate that it's the language or cultural barrier making us less likely to respond or report effectively. Some might say it's just pure, simple, pure hatred with no particular reason. But um, has anyone here talked to the other sides to see where the sentiment comes from? Um, I've personally spoken with um, my personal encounter and I've here are some quotes that I, I get from that. Um, excuse my health language. Black people attack us. Um, always do and break things. Or on the vice versa. Asian hate black people because and they disrespect dis 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 us every day. And uh, let me say, take out places makes us pay first and then um, they get their order. But the whites are no problem. Or let me say, um, Asians think all black teenagers are criminal. You see how um, toxic these spiraling um, narratives are. So the fact is, every scenario is unique, right? And probably it's a collision of multiple causes. I think the root ultimately comes down to tribalism and the bias triggered bullying on personal and cultural level. Hating people that look different is not new. Whether we frame it as racism, orientalism, xenophobia, imperialism, colorism, actually does, it's not important. These are deep-seated issues that have existed throughout history and will probably not go away and continue to exist one form or another. This is the same hatred that drove the Chinese Exclusion Act, which lasted over 60 years until 1943 which is, for those of you who don't know, it's a legislation against a group of people that are coming to this country. And it's probably the same hatred that drove the Japanese internment camp around the same time in the 1940s. History might not repeat, but it often rhymes. The problem is we are hardwired for tribalism. We have evolved to be able to recognize patterns and form hasty generalizations to increase our ability to survive and adapt. And our subconscious bias often likes to make assumptions of individuals based on their skin color, their outlook, where they're from, uh, what they sound like. And slowly our generalizations can form discriminations and disgust. And this hate can become the catalyst for violence when given the right moment. And this crisis is not something we can change in a matter of weeks, months, or through a few social media posts. It requires an ongoing collective effort in all of us. Otherwise, we're going to risk returning back to our silent routines and our silent identity. But today I'm hopeful that the Asian community, com Asian community today is becoming more and more woke and active than ever. And I'm especially thankful and inspired by all the hard pouring dedication from all the artists, musicians, and thinkers coming together today to offer their consolations and ideas to inspire and uplift us. And I would like to thank the global community for collaborating with us, Sun Music, for hosting this event. And special thanks to Ms. Lulu and Lian for co-curating the artists. And I hope we all take this opportunity to not only reminisce our pain, 
but also celebrate our heritage and history, to honor the struggles and resilience, and to hopefully resent to us away from this chaotic time. So without further ado, we have a very diverse program that features music and dance from various communities, as well as representative speakers from our community. But before we begin the music, I would like to invite um, Mr. Richard, which is our Queen's World President, uh, to come on stage and give us a few words. Please welcome Mr. Richard. Thank you so much. And boy, is it glowing in here this afternoon. I am Queen's World President Donovan Richards, and I wanted to stop in uh, to one, celebrate with you uh, all of the contributions that the AAPI community has made uh, across the city, but of course we're in Queens, and of course I want to thank you for your contributions to not just our economy, but to our culture, um, and to everything that you do to ensure that uh, your community can flourish. You know, I come from a family, uh, my father was uh, an immigrant, just became a citizen, well isn't an immigrant, but became a citizen uh, two years ago, and just like many of you, you know, he came to this country in search of a better life, uh, and a better search of life for his family, and that's really what the Asian community uh, continues to do as you help build Queens. And one thing I love about Queens, despite all of the challenges we see, is here we represent 190 countries, over 350 languages spoken in Queens County. We understand here in Queens County that our diversity is our strength and that there is nothing that can break us apart when we all come together. So while there may be those who seek to build walls, we knock those walls down here in Queens County because we understand that our diversity is our strength. I also wanted to be here to stand in solidarity with the Asian community and in my former capacity as a city council member, I chaired the Public Safety Committee and one of the things we saw two years ago was the increase in hate crimes happening across our city and out of that, you know, I founded and passed legislation that created the Office to Prevent Hate Crimes. But we know even passing that legislation and creating this office would not resolve the issue of ignorance and bias. You cannot legislate your way out of bias and ignorance. You can't, uh, you can't use a budget, well you can use a budget, but a budget is not gonna resolve all of the issues around ignorance and bias. What resolves it though is what we did a few weeks ago right here in Flushing where myself and Congresswoman Ming and Peter Ku and Tish James and Reverend Sharpton, we led a march in Flushing where thousands of us came out to say, you know what? An attack on you is an attack on me. An affront on you is an affront on me. And out of that, we sent the very strong message that here in Queens County, hate does not belong here. And there may be those who say the Asian community doesn't belong here, but that's not what we believe. The Asian community belongs here just like everyone else. You are just as American as everyone else. And as we celebrate uh, on tomorrow, Memorial Day, we remember that there were people from all across the country who went out and fought wars for us to enjoy our freedoms right here in this country. When those people went out and fought, they went and fought for each and every one of us. When they went out and shed their blood, they shed their blood for each and every one of us sitting here today. So we don't need, as I've been saying, a divided states of America. We are the United States of America. And yes, we do have to ensure that these hate crimes stop and we're gonna to continue to stand with this community to make sure that those who, uh, uh, who perpetuate hate are held accountable. But we all, as I said, have to work together. We all have to come together when we see an attack against any one of us. And I am grateful to be here once again to see this great uh, community center put on this event. One, way, one thing that can bring us together, and we know it, it's music and art. And that is one way to fight ignorance uh, when we come together. So thank you for doing this event. Uh, and congratulations on your AAPI celebration today. Uh, may we all continue to stand together. I want you to know that you have a friend in me as the borough president and that all 2.4 million residents of Queens stands with each and every one of you. God bless you, stay safe, and we'll be, we'll be here with you 
uh, for part of the program. Thank you for having me today. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Nadine, for the wonderful uniting message for all of us. I'm sure we can all uh, really uh, think about that. So up next, uh, we're going to begin our musical programs, and we're going to have uh, jazz and R&B singer Bibi Boo and award-winning composer Hayley Lam. They're going to perform two singles. I think they're original from the Bibi. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and let's uh, start our music program. So the first song we are going to do is called Awaken the Hope. Um, it's a song that uh, I wrote with my friend Shirley. Um, I know that this past year has been rough for most of us, but I believe that we are going to overcome together because love is among us, and we are in this together, and we are hopeful. So, Huanxin <laughs> Shidan.
So the next song is called Dogs in the Snow. And the title comes from my Chinese name. Uh, my Chinese name is called Xue, which literally means snow and rose. And some people will be like, hey, snow and rose is impossible to be um, together. But um, I growing up, many people tell me this is impossible, that is impossible. One of them, including um, someone told me that you are impossible, uh, impossible uh, to be a good singer. But here I am, here standing and singing for everyone. So I want to encourage you, if people tell you that you are not good enough, don't believe in them. Because you are good enough, you are important, and you are valuable, and you are deeply loved. So, Rose in the Snow, sure. Thank you so much.
Please welcome the violinist and violist. Thank you. Thank you. 
Sons of David King, I play with the heart to the deep and steal and know that Look at all the more you spill on my hands, you know I was a chosen king with a deadly snake Two months gone and I made him go like four and I made him but it I was one of these things The Lord my shit on the back by the feet and I want victory over the field and steam and nobody can stop me I don't fear nobody but the one the belt for the God Almighty who took me to feast for my enemies watching I will not be afraid of 10,000 people sitting against me. Sons from verse 6. Did they hear it from the heart when you feel sick? Yeah. Hands up. Praise the Lord. Yeah. When I see. Yeah. When I see you here. Hands up, everybody. Hands up. If we can relate to the story, I live this far in the dark and the glory. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Walk by faith, not sight, when the bitch don't call me, you can't be nervous. Instead, I'll be courageous, find your purpose, I find my running his verses. Signs are there, no heart for the mind, your body, your soul, and your heart. Can I find peace in the dark, so I pray this song can show you the light. Preach on the mic like I'm saving a life, cause it's not getting cut like a thief in the night. Prepare yourself for the fight, stay strong in your faith, and it will be alright. We will be alright. That was of the heart. And I will close with this song for the loved ones. If you have the loved ones in the building, make sure you love the loved ones. And always remember the loved ones. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. I dedicate this one. Yeah. 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 To my loved ones. To my loved ones, hands up. Yeah, I dedicate this one to my loved ones. I know we can be always beside it. I'm sorry. Lord, let's spit it out a little bit. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, let's go. I dedicate this one to my loved ones. I know that we can be always at times and don't talk much. Slow it down for me, please. Yeah, I dedicate this one to my loved ones. I know that we can be away sometimes and don't talk much. So I put it in the music, cause I know you're listening. God is great, can't you see the way he keep on blessing me? I'm grateful, life is a gift, so move carefully. Lulu, stop the music, please. I'm sorry guys, we didn't get a chance to, to uh, rehearse this song as many times as we did the other song, so I'm gonna do it without the sound. If you allow me, please. Thank you, Lulu. I dedicate this one to my loved ones. I know that we can be away sometimes and don't talk much. So I put it in the music, cause I know you're listening. Guys, and God is great. Can't you see the way he keep on blessing me? I'm grateful. Life is a gift, so move carefully. Loved ones, don't talk to friends. Don't forget the family. R.I.P. Kobe, Deepsea, Hawks, so what a tragedy. They killed my brother Chance. All I have is good memories. Now give me some short and I just hope my mama proud of me. <laughs> it's like it's so emotional, guys. It's so emotional. I just want to thank you all. Please, thank you guys. Yes, sir.
on the Chinese instrument Ogu. And he's actually a master of both instruments, Ogu and Viola. So please welcome him. <laughs>
So that wraps up the uh, first half of the program. And, uh, as you all know, one of the reasons that we're doing this fundraising uh, event today is to find different ways that we can support and strengthen our blushing community um, through various programs. So one of those, for example, we have a Cornerstone Thai Boxing is collaborating with the World Community Center and they're going to host self-defense classes. And uh, so any contributions today, the donations will go to sponsor those classes and uh, they also distribute personal safety equipment. Right? So um, another program they have is to sponsor the patrol volunteers, as well as a civilian car with patrol light and anthem, so they can patrol in the neighborhood, um, just to give our uh, community members a sense of safety and um, kind of like watch out. So uh, if anyone is interested, please go on the website, goNYC.org slash concert2021 or you can just find more information on goldnyc.org as well. So there you can, I'm sure you can donate and find, um, there's a QR code there that you can uh, find more information about that. So um, before we go on the intermissions, um, we're, going, uh, we're gonna have 15 minutes, in, uh, 10 minutes intermission coming up. So for um, 
those of you who are with us on the live streams, uh, we hope you all can stay with us and we will have more exciting programs on the second half as well. And we have words from our leaders and other representatives from the Koreans community after the break. So um, right now we're going to go on a 10 minute break. So hope you all enjoy it and, uh, and come back with us after 10 minutes.
train, I believe, is to address it at the level before the violence, like before discrimination, like straight to the seed of bias. And uh, the bias that we don't like each other, or that we are quiet individuals that we easily target at times. I've seen, personally, I've seen quite a few incidents, but always end in growing misunderstanding and uh, fears and hate. Um, this has to stop, and we need to address our mindset together, make sure everyone of us actually try to communicate outside of our community bubble and talk to people from different backgrounds that might be biased against us. I think it's the only way to untie the misunderstandings between people from different groups. And Asian Peace Project, uh, AsianPeaceProject.com is a platform we created with that purpose in mind. And it's intended to let all of us share our experience on there and let the perpetrators and the deniers know that we are tired of their ignorance and bigotry. And we're here to support against racial bias. And we want peace. So uh, I want to invite all of you to take a look and join. And speaking of speaking up against these tensions and conflicts between communities, we have a very special guest today uh, from New Yorkers Return, Queens Hospital, and his name is Dr. Bay. He's very passionate in these issues and has spoken many times before in regarding these subjects for NYP Queens and other locations. So um, I hope you join us to welcome Dr. Bay and uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Queens Community. I'm Dr. Beck, and thank you, Dr. Nancy Liu, for inviting me here. Um, we're both internal medicine physicians in New York Presbyterian Queens, as you know. We're a very local hospital, uh, right, right across, you know, the casino park. So, my name is Sung Yap Michael Beck, and I, I was born in South Korea, and I came to the United States, to Georgia, 11 years ago. Actually, sorry, I 11 years ago, back in 2003, when I was age 11. And I lived there until 2009, got my uh, US citizenships there, and ever since, you know, um, and I moved to the New York State um, two years ago to work at this hospital. So, I mean, even before COVID-19 started, you know, uh, back in Georgia and some parts here as well, you know, racial slurs, we experienced, my wife and I, my family, my friends, we all had an experience with the, you know, racial attacks, racial slurs, verbal. Um, but we were just like brushing off, we shrugged it off to fit into the model minority, and not cause any trouble for, as we are immigrants and guests in this country. Well, years went by, and then we became accustomed to this treatment. So, last year in March, COVID-19 made a landfall in NYC, and caused a massive death in this community. Everyone felt devastated, defeated, and helpless. The daily death report in the morning news were our grandparents, our fathers, our mothers, our brothers, and our sisters. My close relative was also part of this number in the morning news. This grief turned into an anger and became more expressive. Um, unfortunately, this anger in the scapegoat to blame and turned into a violence toward Asian American and Pacific Islanders, especially elderly and vulnerable populations. Chemical attacks, physical attacks, and even death of innocent everyday citizens or someone's loved ones start to occur. In March 16, 2021, this year, multiple gunshots fired and happened in my hometown in Georgia nine miles away from where my parents were, causing death of nine victims, of many were Asian women. It shook me and got me to worry that this could happen to my parents. Media started paying attention to this incident and politicians did as well. Congresswoman our district, of our district, uh, Ms. Grace Meng, posted a heartbreaking message to get her colleagues to vote for laws against Asian hate crimes. And however, I'm afraid this will also become a day. So what can we do to fix this problem? Is this gonna be a daily news or will this can this be end up in our history books? Talking about history books, 
if you look at your child's middle, to middle school or high school textbooks, it's really rare to find a history of Asian Americans. Can you recall any, like, any events? So I had to look up some, I looked up some uh, events that happened in American history. So, late 18th century was the first Asian settlers were Filipino migrants um, in New Orleans. 18th century, it's a long time ago. And then Asians fought against, fought with General Andrew Jackson in the War of 1812 in defense of New Orleans. Many Asian Americans served in the American Civil War, but, ne but never recognized until U.S. House represented the President of Resolution honoring those actions in, in 2007. 20,000 Chinese immigrants helped building the Transcontinental Railroad in 1864. In 1871, Chinese people were lynched in New, York, uh, New uh, Los Angeles, but trial was overturned and led to no one being charged. Newspaper did not mention about this incident. So how can we fix this problem? Why do we feel like a foreigners, immigrants, even though we are US citizens, we pay taxes, our sons, and we go to war for America. We get enlisted in the army. We help people. We treat people. What, what are we doing different? than other Americans. We are Americans. We should be treated as equal. We should not be looked as foreigners. We should not be asked, where are you originally? So, how I think we should put the history into the textbook. Let our children learn about what our ancestors did, what our ancestors helped to build America. I think that is a first step. And this um, community petrol is a great idea as well. It's a first step. We should always take a first step, not rely on anyone to take the first step for us. Like we did when we were babies. We have to take our first steps on our own. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me speak here. And it's a wonderful performance here in a wonderful community. I love flushing. You know, coming from Georgia, I lived here for two years. And this is a great community. Thank you for, you know, giving me warm welcomes here, and thank you for staying strong. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Bates, for taking his time out, um, taking his time out to speak with us today. I'm sure if you know any physician, I think he's on like 24 hour shift or something or something. They're really you know, taking the time out today to speak with us. So, um, we're fortunate also to have the Congress woman, Grace May, and City Councilman Pili Hu, who is also with us today. But uh, we're going to play part of the video message. And then also, we will have Mr. Cho from the Cornerstone Time Austin to share his vision of the defense class that he has with the community. So, uh... Hi, I'm Congresswoman Grace Meng. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Grace Meng. I wanna thank the GLOW Community Center for inviting me to your Love and Unity in May Stop Anti-Asian Hate event. It's an honor to join you virtually. On May 20th, I joined President Biden at the White House as he signed my COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, making the measure the law of the land. This was an important moment for our Asian American community. Over the past year and a half, Asian Americans have been living in terror. Those of Asian descent have been spat on, slashed, beaten, and even killed. There have been over 6,600 reported acts of violence, with over two thirds being reported by women. And those are just the reported numbers. So many of these incidents go unreported. Even as 2 million Asian Americans have been fighting on the front lines of this pandemic, a dark shadow of violence and pain was cast over our community. But I believe better days are ahead of us. The bill which I introduced with Senator Hirono will help combat the ongoing hate and racist attacks against Asian Americans. And I look forward to this new law having some impact. 
I'm also pushing in Congress to promote the teaching of Asian Pacific American history in our schools to break down the stereotypes and negative impressions that for generations have sadly existed about Asian Americans. From the Chinese Exclusion Act to the incarceration of Japanese Americans, our students must learn about all of America's history, and that includes all communities of color. For too long, the Asian American community has been invisible, but with the signing of my hate crimes bill, Congress and our president are taking a stand and taking action to protect the safety of Asian Americans and calling out the shame and cowardice anti-Asian hate that we've seen. I look forward to the day when our children, our parents, our grandparents can safely walk in their neighborhoods without fear of being attacked. We are closer today than we have been over the last year and a half, and I'm hopeful that we will get there. Thank you for listening. Please be safe. Thank you to the GLOW Center for all that you do for our community. I wish you all a wonderful event. Stay safe. Hello and welcome to the Go Foundation's Benefit Concert. Love and unity in May. Stop anti-Asian hate. My name is Council Member Peter Ku. I represent Foster and Queens in the City Council. Hi, good afternoon. Since I'm here, you don't need to see the video. See, you know, in person is better. Yeah. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to see all of you here uh, to attend this concert. And the main theme today is uh, how to stop uh, anti-Asian crime, right? And we have to be unified and in harmony, uh, not, on, not only among ourselves, families, but for other people too. You know? um, lately, there's a lot of uh, Asian hate crimes. Uh, I think this is just a, a trend, a fact, way after the pandemic, because everyone is at home, they're lonely, right? They're, they're not emotionally stable. Uh, I, I mean, not most of us are good, but there are some people, uh, they cannot stay, stay uh, stay at home for too long. Uh, but they, they need family, emotional, and, and physical uh, and, and, and mental support uh, from among others. You know? And in your city, we have a big problem. You know, we have a lot of uh, homeless problem. We have a lot of uh, mentally challenged problem. And we have a lot of uh, criminal justice problem. All those problems create a lot of people and they have nowhere to go. They stay in the subway, they stay in the streets, and then they have nothing. Uh, they stay on the streets. Imagine you stay on the streets for a long time, nothing. And so you, you, once you are at that stage, you don't care, right? They don't care. So especially when they hear stories about uh, uh, Chinese uh, virus, uh, the virus is, came from China, so they, they emotionally, because they're not stable, uh, they bring on uh, Asian people. So they, they have their skills, right? So they, they come out and pick you up or, or slash you or fight you. Uh, so those are uh, mostly a problem of our whole society. How do we handle that? Uh, I think the city government fails to handle mental health problems. And we fail to take care of homeless people. It's not that we don't have money. We spend a lot of money on homeless people. We spend, a, in one guy sitting in a homeless shelter, it costs $600 a day, more than a hotel. So we spend, a, no, but we didn't spend the money properly. No, so I urge the city administration uh, to do criminal justice reform. Uh, when people commit hate crime or other crime. Uh, we should have a system to, to teach them or let them uh, learn about the, the consequences. Uh, just don't let them out the street the second day. And we, we always, we have criminals that committed crimes 20 times, 30 times, with no consequences. They're still on the street. Uh, because uh, like 
Chinese, they don't want uh, uh, new maids, you know? and they don't want people to stay there, uh, partly because of COVID-19, partly because they want to close down the prison. There are many, many challenging problems. So, so uh, the, the best thing is that uh, we, first we have to take care of ourselves, right? So, you, you uh, and you have to watch out. <laughs> when you go on, I hate to say this, I, I've been in America for 50 years, and this only recently I, I've become so careful. You know, when I walk, I, I spend a little time, I make sure nobody follow me. Or, and it was like last year, in March, in March, during the pandemic, I was attacked by three guys, you know? They tried to walk my phone. And then, well, for some reasons, I, did, I wasn't afraid at that time. They, they, they took my phone, I took it back, and then, and then they, the one, one guy told me, oh, I have a gun. I, I, I immediately, I get very upset. I say some profanity to him, you know. I said, F you, boy, right? let's fight. <laughs> I said, I try not to fight, because, uh -huh. then they went out way. I pushed him on my elbow, and I said, let's fight! <laughs> <laughs> Yu Young, founder of Cornerstone Thai Boxing in Flushing, Queens. With the rise in hate crime violence in our community, 
Glow Community Center and Cornerstone Thai Boxing is inviting you to join us in supporting the communities that we serve. As part of Asian Heritage Month, Glow Community Center proudly presents the Love and Unity in May benefit concert on May 30th, 2021. Proceeds will go to fund and support some of Public Safety Patrol and Cornerstone Thai Boxing's community programs at Glow Community Center. As you provide activities and events to encourage safer downtown Flushing residents, with the support of the 109th Police Department Precinct, Low Community Center is hosting volunteer training for public safety patrol as they patrol the streets of Flushing. We are also providing self-defense and bystander intervention classes at our center to promote safety and for residents and address prevailing fear in our Flushing community. We want to celebrate diversity through the performing arts and share the unique things that make up the different cultures in our community and stand together against hate. You can support these community-based efforts by donating now in the link glownyc.org forward slash concert 2021 or visit their website for more information at glownyc that's spelled g-l-o-w-n-y-c dot o-r-g. See you guys then. Thank you. Hi, my name is Yu Young, founder.
Next, uh, we will have another Chinese pop song performed by Vivi and Hayley. Thank you. 
performance by Grant Swan. And uh, Grant is the school director of the New York Chinese Cultural Center. So uh, please welcome Grant.
performance. Uh, we're going to perform the Castle in the Sky by uh, Joe Versace. Thank you.
the Media Affairs Bureau uh, Immigrant Outreach Unit. Uh, we reach out to all the new immigrant communities to try to help them ease in uh, and be adjusted to you know, working with us as a police department. Uh, a lot of our speakers out here said a lot of very important things. Um, we have an issue where reporting is kind of a, a problem, and uh, that leads to a lot of under-reporting. You know, Grace Meng put, out, put it out there, you know, what is reported versus what's not reported. And so we want to make sure that everyone understands that when you come to us uh, at the police department and you're reporting a crime, we will never ever ask you about your immigration status. I know that comes up a lot with the um, Asian community. They're a little worried, you know, if I go to the police, will they ask me about this? Well, we never do. It's actually a law in place to prevent that from ever happening. And so we want everyone to know that. And the second thing is, I know language a lot of times is, a, is also a problem. A lot of people aren't sure. I don't speak English. When I call 911, what do I do? We can actually ask the uh, 911 dispatch to let you, uh, to ask for someone to that speaks your language. We have a language line at our disposal, Chinese, um, whether it's Mandarin or Cantonese, uh, Bengalese, um, all the different languages, they cover it. And we want you to feel comfortable when you call us to let us know what's going on. With regard to Asian hate crimes, we have an Asian hate crimes task force that's all set up now to make sure that uh, if something does happen, that it's fully investigated. Because that's another concern that people have. You know, if I do report my crime, will it be investigated? So it's absolutely critical that um, that people report their crimes. You know, we want you to report it because that's how we can help you. Policing isn't just a one-sided thing. We don't just go out there and do everything. We rely on the public. We rely on you to make sure that you let us know how we can best serve you to make everything around you as safe as possible. So again, please do not hesitate to ever reach out to us at the NYPD for us to give you a hand in anything in your uh, in your environment that can possibly uh, be a problem for you. All right, thank you very much for your time. And again, thank you for having me. Thank you, Officer Park, for the message. And uh, to end it up, we will have a uh, thank you for uh, uh, Board President Taiwan for hosting us and for being so supportive of us. And she's going to give out a certificate for uh, some of the artists. So uh, if the artists can come on stage, and we're going to give out the certificate. Doing that, I want to thank you for everybody coming and thank you for all the. I don't need this, I have a very loud voice. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like this way better than the microphone. Too much apple. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for your coming and I wish you everybody have a safe, safe life in Flushing. We all depend on everybody. As we say, don't keep silent. Anything happens, we have to jump up. Now we. We can, let's start doing that, please.